Hi, my name's Lucy Barnard. I'm an author and an illustrator, and I'm here today to talk to you about my new book called Ruby and Graham. So first of all, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm from Cheltenham originally, but I now live in Stockport in Greater Manchester. Um, so I went to school in Cheltenham and I did my art foundation course there. I did my, uh, did my illustration degree down in Exeter and then I moved to London where I lived for five years. And while I was in London, I worked in a few different publishing companies and I also got my freelance illustration portfolio together. I was taken on by an agency called Advocate Art, who still represent me now. Um, and I started off illustrating greeting cards. So I did that for a while and then I moved into illustrating children's books and I was illustrating for other people, other people's stories, which was lovely, but really made me want to write my own. Uh, I'd always loved writing when I was a child. I loved it at school. I had a great teacher in primary school who was so encouraging. She was called Miss Langman and she was lovely. She really encouraged my writing and my illustration and my drawings. Um, uh, I think good teachers are just fantastic. Um, and uh, I always had a notebook where I was jotting down little ideas. Uh, so yeah, when I started illustrating for other people, uh, it made me think, oh, I'm gonna get some of those ideas together and uh, try and write my own book. And my first book that I wrote and illustrated was called Squirrel's Busy Day, which I think was out in 2013. Um, I've written and illustrated quite a few books since then. And uh, back to squirrels, so back to Ruby and Graham. Uh, so the idea for this book came from my children. Well, I get a lot of ideas from my children. Um, my daughter is very uh, outgoing, she loves fun, um, she's very cheeky and funny. Um, and my son, he's also lots of fun, but he's a little bit more sensible um, and a little bit more organised, shall we say. So they're very different and it made me think, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what it would be like if one of them wanted to be a bit more like the other one. Um, so that sparked off the idea. And I love drawing animals. I particularly like squirrels. Um, and a red squirrel and a gray squirrel seem perfect. You've got Ruby, who's the red squirrel, and lots of bright color, lots of fun. Um, and Graham is the gray squirrel who I think you can see here on the cover. He's a lot more sensible. He's got a very neat tail. He's got his clipboard and his sensible little jumper. Um, and he's the one who likes to be organized and a bit more practical. Uh, so that was where the idea came from, from, from my children. Um, so I think what I'd like to do now is read the book to you so that you know the story and you can see the illustrations. And then when I've read the book, I will talk a bit more about the pictures and the illustrations um, and how I got the ideas for those. Uh, so let's start off by reading Ruby and Graham. Ruby loved fun. She was always playing games and partying in Acornwood and everyone loved her. Graham loved organising. He was always organising everything and everyone in Acornwood and he owned a very useful clipboard. One hot afternoon, Graham tried to organise all the animals in Acornwood, but no one listened to him. Everyone just wanted to have fun with Ruby. Graham knew he could never be like her, or could he? We didn't know you could dance, Graham. We had no idea you could swing so high. Hey, Graham, cool hat. Graham loved being popular and decided to change for good. Having fun was easy. Who wanted to be sensible all the time? But things in the wood became ever more chaotic and confused. Ruby decided enough was enough. Hiya, drawled Graham. Come to invite me to a party or a woodland conga? Um, no, said Ruby. She explained 
that they all needed the old sensible Graham back. No, no, laughed Graham. I'm more like you now, Ruby. But Graham, the thing is, I wish I was more like you, she confessed. What? said Graham. Nobody takes me seriously, shrugged Ruby. They think I'm only good for partying. She added in a small voice, and I'm scared that if I change, they won't like me any more. Graham leapt to his feet, combed his fur and stood up straighter than he had in weeks. We'll show them, Ruby, he cried. You've taught me how to have fun. Now I'm going to teach you how to organise. Graham retrieved his clipboard and he and Ruby set to work. As they watched the sun go down, Graham gave Ruby a present. We have more important work to do tomorrow, he said. Ruby looked worried. She didn't want to change too much. Don't worry, Ruby, Graham laughed. What I mean is, we have to work on our next party. The winter party was the best one that Acornwood had ever seen. After all, as Ruby and Graham realised, you can be sensible and sensational. So there you go. That's my book, Ruby and Graham. I hope you enjoyed listening to it. I hope you liked the story. And now I'm going to tell you a bit more about my illustrations. Here I am to talk about the process of illustrating Ruby and Graham. So the first thing is doing char character sketches. So here's a few examples of Graham and Ruby, different ideas for how they might look. Um, when I'm happy that I've got some good ideas, I then go to colour just to see what they might look like. There's a couple of examples here of Ruby. The one on the left was the first one. Uh, she's got quite thin arms and legs there, so I changed her, made her a bit softer and a bit fluffier. Uh, there's Graham down at the bottom. He changed a bit, but not too much. His jumper changed colour. His legs were a bit fatter. Here is an example of, this was right at the beginning when I just put Ruby in a very simple woodland scene to see what she'd look like with a colour background, uh, with the autumn leaves falling. And then this was an, a spread that I did. Just again, just to see uh, what it would look like. It, I called this the panic spread. This was before I'd planned the book out. I knew I wanted to have um, paid two pages like this where everybody's worrying and panicking because Graham's not been organising them anymore. And I tried some little speech bubbles, but then I took those away and just had a few more characters and a bit more detail. Uh, so when I found that New Frontier wanted to publish the book, I then moved on to work with them and the first thing to do was thumbnails, which are lots of little very simple sketches just to see how the book's going to look as a whole. You can see I've popped the colour spread in there, spread six, um, because I'd already done that one. I didn't know if it was going to stay like that. The rest are all very rough pencil sketches. Um, it's nice to have a mixture of double page spreads, that's where both pages are one whole scene, like spread one. Um, single pages, uh, vignettes, which are little scenes that don't bleed off the edges of the page, and also cut to white illustrations, that's where there's no background uh, to the character, it's just the white page. And then the next stage is to move on to the sketches. These go through a few changes until the publisher and I agreed on what looks best. Here's spread one as a sketch. So I've left room where the text will go. Um, I don't illustrate anything too near the edge of the page, that's called the trim, or anything, well, there's a line down the middle, that's called the gutter, that's where the middle of the book will be. So you don't put any important illustration in that area. Here's spread one all coloured up. So that's the next stage when all the sketches have been agreed and everything's been worked out. 
it's the fun part, it's the colouring up. So here is uh, how that's first spread, it's a double page spread and here's how it looked. No text on this, just the illustrations. And here's a few more examples. So there's the panic spread, it changed a bit from those first ideas that I was showing you. And then this is what it looked like in colour, lots more detail, lots more going on. There's Graham over on the right in his hammock, not bothering what's happening in the wood. And here's another, another two pages. That's the sketch. And then this is what it looked like when I'd coloured it up. Graham's ears changed. I realised that grey squirrels have rounded ears and it's only the red squirrels that have the more tufty ears. So as well as the interior illustrations, I also have to think about the cover, very important. And here are a few examples of cover ideas, cover sketches, uh, with Graham and Ruby in different positions. She's being fun and dancing around, throwing leaves in the air, and he's just looking a bit worried. And then this was the final sketch. And what we, I agreed with the publisher how it would look. That's the front cover and the back cover together. Um, and there's the space. You can see where I've sort of sketched out where the text will go and the barcode and the title and my name on the front. And then the final colour cover looked like this without any of the text in place. All the spaces are left for that. But this was how it looked in colour. So that was the final, the final cover design and when it's all finished uh, I send it all off to the publisher and then wait for the final book to be sent to me, which is always lovely. So uh, here we are, now I'm going to do um, a drawing of Ruby. So I've got my pencil, I've got my rubber in case I go wrong. Let's get started. So, first of all, let's draw her head. Now, I usually have to say I draw my computer with a stylus. So I haven't drawn Ruby with a, a pencil and paper for a long time. So let's see how we get on. Right. So the top of her head, we're going to draw her. She's sort of dancing along. So, got a little curve. For the, that's her forehead. And then it goes into her nose. A bit of her nose and then it curves around like this let's give her a lovely shiny black nose if you color it in and leave a little bit of white looks like it's nice and shiny right so let's carry on with her where her mouth is so you can see it my hands not in the way too much She's really smiling, so let's give her a nice happy smile like this. And then from there, we go down, because her mouth's open. So you go down this, and then you can give her a little, little curve like that, so she's got a little cheeky grin. Okay, and then we can carry on, and then her mouth's open, so you can just see a little curve there, so it looks like her mouth's open. Right, now, the bottom of her chin sort of comes around like this. Now let's go back to the top. So I'm just going to draw her head without ears first, and then we'll come back and put the ears in. So. Her head goes round, it's this sort of shape. So it's thinner at the top, and then she's got a squirrels, they have big cheeks, don't they, to store those acorns and nuts. So she's got a bit of a, it goes in there, and then it curves out there. Right, so let's give her some ears. Now red squirrels have tufty ears, tufty red ears, so there's one. <laughs> now I can rub out there just so we've got a bit of space to then put her other ear in. Oh, they're quite fluffy aren't they? There we are. So we can use the pencil to give her a bit of 
a bit of fluff. And if you put a little bit of shading, that's the inside of her ear. There we go. Now, so there's her face and we need an eye. So let's give her, also she's got a, this is where it would be white. So we just do a little bit of a suggestion there. Um, so if you color this up, you can make this bit red and then you leave that bit white. Let's give her, her she's got a nice sort of oval shape for her eye and she's sticking up. So color that bit in and give her an eyebrow. She's having fun. Right, she also has on a little scarf. So that's just right underneath her chin. So there's the little knot there. And then let's draw the scarf in there. And then the two bits of scarf flying out behind her. Now, let's do her body. So she's quite slim at the top and then it goes down to a little tummy. So down we go. Now her arm is flying out behind her. She's having fun. So that is actually going over the scarf. And there's her her other arm, the other part, the other part of her arm, should I say? Let's give her a little a little paw. So you can draw it in like this with with the thumb, and then you can just do a little line there to show that she's sort of got fingers. Even though squirrels don't have fingers, do they? But Ruby does. Right. So there we go. Rub out that bit of scarf because you can't see that anymore. And then let's do her, the rest of her body. And it goes down there. Now, her tummy goes round. And then we've got her leg here, which is going, she's throwing it out behind her because she's skipping along. So, and they've got, She's got quite long toes, quite long feet. So that's one. Uh, and then again, like we did the white bit there, do the suggestion here of her, her white tummy. And then we need to put in her other leg here, don't we? So this is her other leg, and this is the one that her foot that's on the ground where she's dancing. There we go. So draw in her foot a suggestion of toes. And we need her other arm, don't we? She needs she's got two two arms, so she's throwing one up like this. Like that. And let's give her a hand, so there's her thumb. And then the curved bit for her hand. And then put in her her fingers. Uh, she's got her bag on, so I forgot to leave space for her back. So let's just rub out a little bit there and a little bit there. So her bag, she always got her bag with her. I don't know what's in her bag. I don't know what you think she keeps in her bag. She's always got it. And there we go. We'll clasp and then do the, the strap that sits around there and then it goes around the back of her body like that. So there's her bag. Now the best part I think is a big fluffy tail. So have a lot of fun with her tail. She's got a really big tail, it's Ruby. Goes all the way around here. around this is a, I like the shape of her tail and then you can make it even more fluffy you can add in add in more bits of fur like this with your pencil if you wanted to do this in color you can do it with color pencils and then you can color it all in afterwards but I'm just doing it in gray pencil today maybe I should have done gray as I'm using a gray pencil 
Right, and then the movement lines, because she's dancing along. Um, we'll give her a bit of detail on her tail. She has some little flecks, I think in the picture they're sort of gold colour. There we go, and the last thing is to give her a little shadow so she looks like she's actually on the ground. And there we go, there's Ruby. So now I've got a few questions that have been sent to me, um, just to tell you a bit more about myself. Uh, so here we go. Uh, the first question is, what did you like reading when you were a child? Uh, I absolutely loved Enid Blyton. Uh, I can remember that I liked um, The Wishing Chair and The Faraway Tree, The Famous Five. They were some of my favourites. Um, I also loved, there was a series called The Adventure Series by Willard Price, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, I liked oh, Alice in Wonderland, The Secret Garden, or oh, I love Roald Dahl, I read all his books and I especially loved George's Marvellous Medicine, that was one of my favourites. Um, I used to read a lot, uh, there were fewer distractions when I was little, there weren't so many TV shows and social media and uh, computer games, none of that was around so I um, had more time to read and draw pictures, um, so that's what I loved to do. And I still love to curl up with a good book these days. That's one of my favourite things. Um, nothing better. Uh, so the next question is, where do you get your ideas for your books? Um, and I think I've said before that my children really give me a lot of my ideas. Just um, things they say and do, um, their friends, situations that we're in. Um, that can always spark off ideas. Uh, and I jot things down. Um, and I said before as well that I love to draw animals, so I'll put some of those ideas into animal characters. Um, uh, Ruby and Graham obviously came from my two children and uh, them being very, very different. Um, so yeah, it's great to have um, children that can give you these ideas when you're writing children's books. Uh, so I think that's, that's mainly where I get my ideas from. Well, ideas can also come from anywhere. I think if you're constantly thinking in that way, um, you can hear something on the radio or out in the street, different conversations um, in the playground, in the park um, that, can, that can spark off ideas. So I think if you think in that way um, and your mind's kind of constantly going over things like that, then yeah, ideas can come from lots of places. Um, next question is, did you used to write stories for fun when you were younger and um, do you still have some? So I found this book here which is one that I did when I was very young, um, called Gemma at the Zoo uh, by Lucy Barnard. Um, you can see I made it, stuck it all together with sellotape that's all turned a bit yellow now. Um, but yeah, it's a story of, there's no, I have to say, not a lot happens in this book. She goes to the zoo and then she loses her mum and then there's a happy ending. Um, I liked, I can see here, I remember that I loved the Mr. Men books and I think some of these, some of these pictures were inspired by the Mr. Men books. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, the story of Gemma. And I noticed that there's a little squirrel in there. Looks a bit different to the squirrels I draw now. But um, yeah, that was one that I did when I was very young. So that's nice to, nice to have a look at and to keep. Um, so the next question I've been asked is, if you were a character in Winnie the Pooh, which one would you be and why? Um, so I think I'd be a mixture of two characters. I think um, Tigger. Um, because I do have quite a lot of energy and I'm quite a morning person. I know not everybody is, but I like to get up early and go for a run. Um, so that's a bit of Tigger in me while I'm bouncing along. But also Rabbit, because I think Rabbit was um, a bit controlling and sort of liked to take the lead. Um, and I think my children would tell you that um, at home I'm a bit like that. Um, so yeah, Rabbit and Tigger, um, a mixture of them both, I think. Uh, and I've also been asked if I had a superpower, what would that be and why? And straight away I thought flying. Um, I would absolutely love to be able to fly. I went in a hot air balloon when I was younger, which was just incredible. Um, just floating through the sky, the silence and the, uh, the view, it was just amazing. Uh, and I think that, you know, you watch birds, flying through the sky and oh yeah I just think that would that would be great I'd, I'd love to be able to do that so yeah that would be my answer to that one 
Um, how long does it take you to write your books? That really varies. Sometimes ideas come and you write them down and they're fully formed and they don't change that much from the initial idea to what's published. It, it just all seems to flow and it all comes very easily. And then other times you have a really good idea, but it's, it's hard to get it down. It's hard to get the right words to make it sound how you want um, or to match it up with the illustrations. Um, or you write it and there's far too many words, you have to do a lot of editing. So it can really, really vary. Um, it, I, I wouldn't say that it's always quick or it's always takes longer. It's, it's really a mixture of both. It depends on the story, actually. Um, and when I write, I, um, I have a notebook, so I jot down ideas in the notebook. Um, or if I haven't got my notebook, I'll maybe use my phone uh, and then I'll go back to them when I have time to actually write the, the story. I tend to write it on my computer in my studio, um, but I can still, if I'm not near my computer, I can still write uh, with a pen and, and paper um, as long as I've got silence. I need to have no distractions and silence when I write. Um, if my children are around or there's lots going on, I find it hard to concentrate. Um, when I'm drawing and illustrating, I can chat, I can be distracted, I can have other things going on, that's fine. But when I'm writing, I really do need uh, peace and quiet so that I can concentrate. Um, are you working on a new book now and what is its theme? Um, yes, I've got a few ideas on the go. One in particular is about uh, a dog called Neville and he's very noisy um, and his poor neighbours have a lot to put up with. Uh, so I'm not going to say too much more, but that's where the story starts. Uh, and I'm also doing another one which is quite different. It's a very gentle, sweet story, um, all about uh, love being the best feeling of all. And it's got two bears in it. Um, they're the main characters in that story. Uh, so they're bubbling away at the moment. Um, so yeah, hopefully look out for those. Um, and how important are the illustrations in your stories? Well, obviously, uh, I'm a picture book author and illustrator, so the pictures are very, very important. Um, the text and the illustrations go hand in hand. I think you need both of them. But the illustrations really tell a lot of the story. Um, they, When I write and then edit, the words that I take out, I know that the pictures and the, the illustrations will do uh, the job of the words. And um, for little children, uh, they'll often have the story read to them by an adult. So they need the, the, the images, the pictures. Um, they are concentrating on those and looking at all the, the rich detail that's in them. Um, so you, you, you need, you know, the illustrations really, really need to work. Um, and then I find uh, children will go back again and again to a story um, that they love. Uh, so it's nice to put detail in, things that they can spot they maybe won't have spotted the first time around. Um, so yeah, definitely very, very important in my, in my work. Uh, Anyway, that's all the questions. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Um, so here's my book again, Ruby and Graham, and I really hope you enjoyed it. I loved writing it. I loved illustrating it. And um, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you.